Glad to have you with us here on Leading Edge. Hopefully you've had a great week. We're going to talk about something that has been talked about for years and years in planning and finally comes to fruition and really comes to a head this week with March Madness and what we've seen start up just a few days ago. We're going to talk about sports gaming here in the state of Ohio, specifically some of the proprietors here in Northwest Ohio. We'll talk to them coming up in just a bit, but we wanted to get a little bit more reference point to what has been happening and the policing of all of this going forward. Earlier this week, I spoke with a member of the Ohio Casino Control Commission. So the commission, again, is in charge of, you know, we license all of the people and entities that want to be involved in sports gaming. And that covers a real wide range of, um, you know, the, the entities that want to offer it. So, you know, DraftKings, Caesars, um, all those types of entities that people are very familiar with. Um, in addition to all of the suppliers that supply, um, you know, whether that's the, you know, verification information, you know, accounts that um, folks use that the uh, proprietors use to verify that, you know, those people that are creating accounts are in the state of Ohio and of legal wagering age. Um, the folks that do the geofencing to, again, make sure that all the bets placed in Ohio are actually being made in Ohio, um, as well as some of the individuals that work at these companies and those kinds of places. Um, the commission also issues the licenses for all of the bars and restaurants that have those kiosks um, that, that patrons can use as well. So it's a wide variety um, and licensing was really just the first step now that betting has launched in the state of Ohio. Now, um, a lot of our work is focused on a lot of compliance work um, and making sure that everybody's following the rules. Can we dive into that a little bit? And coming up in our last segment today, we will actually talk to one of the local organizations that dove into those kiosks, You Bet Ohio, they had to submit, you know, all the proper forms as far as licensing was concerned. But let's let's take it down the road as you you led up to that and talk a little bit about what we are seeing as far as now that we're in the throes of this. What is your role? What what do you guys? What are you looking out for? What what is the end game? So yeah, so the commission's responsibility is to make sure uh, our mission is to ensure the integrity of gaming. And so what we make sure is that all of our licensees, you know, they're operating within the laws and the rules that the commission has established. So patrons understand that, you know, they're working with a licensed entity um, and that the betting that the, that's going to take place is done in a fair and honest way, even though, as we all know, I mean, obviously betting, there's always an element of, of chance and risk, um, but that, you know, everybody is operating in the same space um, and following all of the same rules. Jessica Franks, once again, Director of Communications for the Ohio Casino Control Commission, joining us here on Leading Edge today. Jessica, as you talk about the rules and and I guess learn, is it a learn as we go type scenario? And are you guys even in your office in Columbus, are you talking about this being a fluid situation? And obviously things might come up down the road. How do you adapt? How do you adjust? Is there any talk for that? Because I know before this launch, there had to be that 10 commandments, if you will, of sports gaming in Ohio and what everybody needs to follow. But are we seeing a situation where this is going to kind of grow and adapt and advance as we go forward? So obviously, you know, the commission in developing our own rules, we looked to other jurisdictions that already had established wagering, um, you know, and saw maybe what was working well in their jurisdictions, what are maybe some areas that, um, you know, especially as Ohio's law is a little bit unique compared to some of other, the other states, um, you know, if there were things that we needed to do a little bit differently in order to, um, you know, account for those unique uh, quirks in Ohio's law. But I will say, regardless of the type of gaming, whether it's casino gaming, sports gaming, fantasy contests, any of the types of gaming that the commission oversees, um, as a state agency, we are required to review our rules um, at least once every five years, but more often if needed. Um, and to make sure that they still are meeting the goals, um, both for the original legislation and the commission's work. And so one of the things that the commission has done over the years is we work very closely with all of our licensees. And if there are areas where maybe, you know, best practices have changed over the years, um, you know, we have made the necessary adjustments to our rules to reflect those changes to make sure that we're not necessarily you know, regulating something just for regulation's sake, but making sure that we are taking the appropriate steps to, you know, account for the level of risk 
Um, and so we often say we cannot eliminate the risk. Um, we are really in a risk management uh, a little bit of making sure that, you know, the folks that are participating in this, the controls are there um, that need to be there, um, but also enabling, you know, all of our licensees to conduct business as well in this in the state. Jessica, I, I got to ask you, just from a communications role and, and seeing what you do on a day-in, day-out basis, uh, are there any of those rules that you were kind of like, wow, I didn't realize we had to have one of those on the books. And then on the backside of that, I'd like you to kind of comment on, since we've had these rules in place specific to casinos, racinos throughout the state of Ohio already, what is the one that just keeps getting tripped again and again? So I think, you know, it's really hard to say some of the rules. I'll use this as an example. It's for casino gaming, so it's not quite sports gaming uh, specific. But when the casinos first opened, um, basically, there were rules in place about how slot machines needed to be brought into the state. And basically, you know, the computer that contained all of the, you know, the game contents itself had to be shipped separately from the machine itself. And there were a lot of rules about that. Um, and so that was one of those things where after a while, you know, our folks talking to, um, you know, the casino operators, our auditors, our folks that are on the ground making, you know, checking into these things, um, you know, was that rule really necessary that those things are shipped separately when, you know, a slot machine can't be put out onto the floor for patrons without one of our agents um, testing that and making sure it's been tested appropriately and it has approved software and sealing it before it goes into play. So that's just kind of one of those rules where we've been able to make some adjustments for it based on, you know, best practices and what makes the most sense um, from, from a regulatory perspective and enables us to keep, you know, tabs on things the way we need to. Um, but for sports gaming, um, one of the things that we did notice, at least, you know, even prior to launch was some of the rules that we have regarding responsible gambling weren't necessarily being followed by all the members of the industry. Um, and so we, you know, let everybody know what our rules are. Um, they are a little bit unique from state to state. Um, so we do have a little bit of a unique one, especially when it comes to promotions and bonuses that says you can't you can't call something free or risk free if the patron at any point has to risk any of their own funds to obtain that promotion or bonus. And so we did notice a few instances where folks were not um, playing by the rules. Um, and so we've we issued explicit guidance to all of our operators in these areas, you know, multiple times. Um, but when we kept seeing failures to abide by our rules, the commission did need to take some administrative action against a couple of entities for those. Um, but I am pleased to say that since we've done that, we haven't had any other infractions um, in that space. And we have seen really, really good improvement um, when it comes to making sure things have the re appropriate responsible gambling message, um, as well as the all of the promotions and rules. Jessica Franks, once again, Director of Communications for the Ohio Casino Control Commission. Our conversation continues right after this. Welcome back here on Leading Edge. Once again, Jessica Franks from the Ohio Casino Control Commission joining us now that we are within the throes of March Madness and the craziness that is sports gaming and gambling throughout the state of Ohio. Uh, Jessica, I wanted to ask you today because what we have seen, and I just, I'm curious to get kind of an inside feel of the conversations that happen where you are, and maybe you can comment, maybe you can't, but is there the sense that we may see this go federal at some point as far as gaming? We've already got 30 states around the U.S. that have decided to do this, Ohio being the latest. What do you think? What What are you hearing? So anything really, I think it, it could go either way, Jeff. I know that um, you know, when PASPA was overturned, it did leave the decision to do that to the states. Um, there has been some movement at the federal level to at least um, treat advertisements for sports gaming, um, you know, to treat that at sort of a federal level rather than leaving those decisions to the states um, over some concerns that have, have been raised. Um, so I think it's just one of those things we'll have to keep our eyes on and see what happens. 
let me ask you this March Madness, obviously, the Masters Golf Tournament, the Super Bowl. As we get more and more of the, the World Series, I'm sorry, I don't want to leave any sport out. Um, <laughs> the World Cup of Soccer, I could go on and on. Uh, but as we see more and more of these major events happening, on the calendar each and every year is is that a heightened sense of awareness moment for the commission and or any of these entities that you guys regulate so we treat you know all sports gaming is sort of treated there isn't um, a different level of scrutiny or anything like that based on you know we treat all the sports the same um and so yes there could be obviously there's going to be increased interest around certain events um like the super bowl march madness certain things like that um but when it comes to the commission's work um it does not matter what sporting event it is um, we take the same care to regulate and make sure that all of our operators are, are operating within our rules that's fair. Uh, Jessica, I had to ask you because, and, and this has come up in conversations in our newsroom, I'm sure people have had these conversations at home, but if you have a youngster in the household, I've got a 16 year old who has a cell phone and how, how does the policing go about happening for some of these people who you are licensing and they are told the rules, right? You cannot have certain ages participating in this, but do you guys play into this at all of making sure that you aren't getting those who are underage involved in sports gambling? Yeah, Jeff. So the legal wagering age for sports gaming in Ohio is 21. Um, and so the commission does, you know, part of the law says you have to be 21 in order to place a sports wager. And so one of the commission's rules does pertain to when accounts are created, the types of things that uh, our operators need to take into account when those um, accounts are being created. And so the in order to create an account, you know, individuals are going to have to provide a host of, you know, personal information, um, not just, you know, your name, but other information, your date of birth, where you live, um, you know, and any all different operators may ask for different things. Um, and then they, they have to verify that information. In some cases, um, you know, operators may ask for a selfie with your driver's license or another form of government ID. And again, this is to help make sure that only those individuals who are over the age of 21 um, are able to create an account and place wagers. Um, and so they take that very seriously. We take that very seriously as well. And so um, anytime there may be concerns about, you know, those types of things happening, we obviously will take that very seriously. Jessica, can you kind of school our audience on how, uh, I guess, successful and or I, I don't know if I just want to throw out the term busy, it has been as far as not only bringing casinos into the state of Ohio, but also sports gaming over the last few months? Yeah, so um, we used this uh, analogy today. So I guess in the past uh, two years, um, our licensing and investigation team processed about 3,000 uh, applications pertaining to sports gaming um, for the four casinos in the state of Ohio. However, from August until December, um, right before the launch of sports gaming, that same team processed 4,000 sports gaming applications. So um, the last year or so has been a very busy one for the commission, but that was really just to stand up the industry. Um, now, really, our day-to-day -day work begins, and that does include, like I said, a lot of that compliance work and making sure that now that everybody's operational, um, that they are playing by the rules. Um, and we still do have some operators that will come online later this year. Um, and so we'll be doing all of the necessary compliance checks for those as well. I've got to ask, do you do you see this as obviously the numbers you just threw out, there was a surge, right? And do you see that waning once people start getting their feet underneath this? Or do you think this is going to have something uh, or going to be something that's really going to have some staying power? So, Jeff, we've seen at least on the casino gaming side, you know, there's a, a lot of mergers and acquisitions and ownership changes and things like that that typically result in a fairly steady stream of uh, work at all levels for the commission. And so I would imagine that, um, like I said, in addition to those operators that have chosen to launch at a later date um, and the work associated with, with making sure that they launch uh, appropriately, we will probably at some point um, see some kind of the same types of mergers and acquisitions take place it may just be a little bit further down the road once the industry has had some time to mature and i've got a few seconds left i, I did want to ask quickly when you guys check on compliance is it like the health is it like the health checks that happen to restaurants do you just drop in how does that work 
So our, our team will conduct regular audits to make sure that uh, everybody is, again, operating by the rules. A lot of that is checking to make sure that the processes that the entities Every one of these entities has a massive book of internal controls that govern how all of those processes take place. You know, how do they go about verifying an individual's account when they create it? Um, and we will check to make sure that all of those steps have been followed. Um, and so some of that can be done remotely um, for some of the, the retail sports books that exist. Some of that will include um, an on-site visit from our folks. So it does keep um, our staff very busy. Um, but again, that's all to make sure that um, maintaining the integrity of gaming in the state of Ohio. We're going to bring this conversation down to the local level right after this. Stay with us. Welcome back. Thank you so much for spending some time with us here on Leading Edge. Once again, sports gaming, our topic today. We are within the throes of March Madness. There are 40 kiosks around Northwest Ohio, of which you've probably seen at establishments, and those 40 are monitored and managed by You Bet Ohio. With me today is Tatum Linovit. She is the uh, Director of Marketing for You Bet Ohio. Glad to have you with us. Thank let's, you. let's go back a bit. You and I were okay. talking in the commercial break. There is an 85-year-old patriarch <laughs> of this family that decided at one point, hey, casino gambling's coming to Ohio. Let's find a way to get involved. So you had to go through a process of getting a license to Correct. do this. Yes. Talk me through the timing of all of that. So that just getting the license probably took about a year and a half. And it was a Class C license, it's a correct? Class C license, which so, means what? So there are three there are three types of licenses in Ohio. There's Type A that's your FanDuel and your DraftKings, mm -hmm. um, all of your mobile, and then there's a B that are your racinos and your ca casinos, mm -hmm. and then there's a Type C which is something that's completely new to the to everyone across the country. The only state that's doing this, and that's a Type C license. That's um, you can have a, if you have a, a liquor license, yeah. um, you're in good standing with a lottery. You can apply for a sports gaming license, and if, once you're approved through the lottery and the Ohio Casino Commission control, you can offer sports gaming. You at got your the thumbs up. You got the, got thumbs the thumbs up thumbs in October. Up. Yes. And then you went live in January. Yes. Ninety days. It, it was stressful, Maybe. I'm sure, <laughs> trying to get to that point. What what stood out as I was talking to the Ohio Casino Control Commission, Tatum? I'm I'm interested in your take because yeah. obviously. You told me as we were sitting there watching this, you said, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I, I could see you going through your checklist in your head saying, I remember this, I remember this. So many rules and regulations that you also have to follow. Yeah, there's a lot. I mean, um, just, you know, when she, she was talking about um, just transporting the, the sports betting kiosk, I mean, they had a, ca a camera on them at all time. You had to take a picture um, of what the truck looked like with it locked, with it unlocked, um, all of these things, you know, it's so it's so regulated mm -hmm. um, that there's just, there's there's a lot of rules and a lot of regulations that we had to work through. Um, to get to that to point. To get to that point, so, yes. So we talked about there were initially 15 locations where Correct. these kiosks were, yep. you're now up to 40. Yep. Talk about those machines and and kind of, I guess, the, uh, the rules and regulations, the oversight, if you will, that those are going through right now, especially this week with March Madness. Yeah, so um, that's a great question because to get there, once we onboard our hosts, it's there, there's just there's so much training that's involved. You think that you just drop off a kiosk and people can start placing a bet. That's not how it works. You have to um, train them on sports betting 101, what that looks like. Mm -hmm. um, so that they can answer questions, So that they can right? answer questions. Um, you have to go through all of this responsible gaming, you know, you know, what to look for if you think somebody might have a problem, if mm -hmm. somebody is on the VAP list. Um, and then just how to do the books, you know, that this is all new for them. Like, how are they gonna sweep their books? How are we, you know, gonna reconcile, you know, monthly? Um, how we're gonna check IDs and how we're gonna make sure that there's no one underage betting at our kiosk. That's right. something very important to us. Um, so which, it's, which, which makes it very different. You and I were listening when she was talking about, I, I gave her the analogy of yeah. my 16 year old getting online and yeah. doing not so many eyeballs around that sometimes, but in these establishments, these people are trained to see those who are trying to skirt the system. Yeah. and. You know what's what's great about the bars and restaurants is they're already IDing people for drinks anyway, mm -hmm. right? So right now our kiosk, um, you have to before you place a bet, you have to go up to the bar and show them your ID, and you'll get a stamp or a wristband or something, and then you can place a bet. Um, like high low beer in the, in just, the early yes, days. Yes, just like high low beer, right? 
Um, but we are, so, so IGT, who manufactures our sports betting mm -hmm. kiosks, they've always just been in casinos, so they've never needed an age verification. So they're working on an age verification swipe right now so that when you go up to the kiosk, you'll swipe your ID um, and then it'll verify your age so that you won't have to go to the bar to get ID'd. In our remaining 90 seconds, I wanted to talk about this week in general. Yes. And I mean, this is, this is kind of why you guys got into this, yeah, right? I mean, it, it's, it's exciting for you, yes? Yeah, this is, I mean, this is huge. Um, you know, we looked at the numbers of football and those were big. And what we're seeing now with March Madness is huge. That, mm -hmm. I mean, I can't wait to have a full football season ahead of us, you know. I, I, asked, I asked the Ohio Casino Control Commission about this going federal. Mm -hmm. um, do you think we will get to that point where it will be all 50 states and there will be government oversight? Quite possibly. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's already government oversight. Don't let me say that wrong. But from a state to federal standpoint. Yeah. I mean, I, any, anything can happen, right? Mm -hmm. And um, what's unique is, is the Type C license, what we have here in Ohio. Yeah. If that could go to another state, that's huge for the local bars and restaurants. You know, it's just another, another revenue stream for them, which is so important. Biggest surprise in the last three months for you uh, in, as mm -hmm. this new business owner? Biggest surprise. Um, Gosh. Something maybe you didn't know, you didn't think about, you uh, you had to learn. Oh gosh, I'm talking about money lines <laughs> and parlays and teasers now. I mean, I didn't know any of those things, right? Right. So, um, so that was that was all all new. But it's it's just been a wild ride. It has been so much. Where do fun. people go if they want to find out more more about UBet Ohio? So they go to our website mm -hmm. at ubetohio.com. Um, and they can check out all of the locations or where they can place the bet in, uh, all around Ohio. Good deal. Tatum, thank you so much. Yes, Great thank insight. you. We'll be back right after this. We appreciate you spending part of your day with us. As always, if you missed any part of this interview talking about sports gaming here in Ohio, check out the WTOL YouTube page. I'm Jeff Smith. Have a great rest of your Sunday.